Hello everyone, my name is Sultan. I've recently passed my FRC path part 1 from my first attempt. I'm currently in ST2 and I'm going to be going to ST3 this year. So, I've noticed that there aren't any guidance about the exam. So freaking pissed! I found great difficulty deciding which resource I should study from. So I'm going to save you the time. I'm going to tell you what I did. No time to waste. And I, I'll break it down into five main steps. Those five steps hopefully will make the exam a lot easier for you. I particularly was not extremely stressed during the exam. I felt like the, the way I prepared for the exam made it a lot easier. I'll tell you exactly how I studied and what the, what the best resources are, the pros and cons of each resource and what I think of them. So let's start. The first thing I would highly recommend, <laughs> I'm not sponsored by this course, but it is the e-learning course by Dr. Maitreyi Roy. I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm saying that correct, but I'll, I'll leave a link down um, in the description box for that course. Um, her course is amazing. She covers almost everything, all the topics. So let me just show you quickly the template of her course. This is available on her website as well. She starts talking about syndromes, GI, genital urinary. You can see she broke down every single chapter. Now, the thing about her course is that it is very, very intensive course. She's quite fast when she teaches. So what I found helpful is that I watch the recording of that video because when you start that course, she invites everyone into a WhatsApp group. And then once that course is delivered, Obviously, it's only shared with that WhatsApp group. And I found it a lot helpful to watch that recording so that I can pause every few minutes, try to absorb the information. And I genuinely think that when you do her course, you should only, well, I only retained about 40% of what she said. You can't remember anything. She uh, speaks about a lot of things in great depth. So don't get overwhelmed if you think the information is, is quite a lot. So step one is to get into this e-learning course. And step two, is to invest in Anki. Anki is an amazing flashcard um, app. The, the iPhone app is, is a paid app. However, I think the desktop app is free. So I highly recommend that you invest in it. And, and I'll show you what I did. Uh, once the e-learning course is out, I played the lecture. I kept her presentation on one side. And then I opened Anki. Whenever I, I notice an information that I want to retain or I want to memorize, I immediately made an, an Anki flashcard. And how Anki works is that it keeps reminding you uh, the information you forgot. Let me show you an example. So basically, let's see, as you can see, I've done every system. So for example, we can say study now, and then I can just, sometimes I don't even put a particular question. I just say like a table of testicular tumors, IHC. And it's just like, you know, and I, I try to think about it. Uh, what could they possibly be? What should I expect them? And then you press enter and then it gives you like that's a table i've put um either from her lecture or from another resource and then it gives you it gives you options or whether you couldn't rem remember anything again hard good and easy and you can see uh, depending on what you choose it will remind you after that particular interval so it's really helpful and, and it honestly helped me a lot because what i did is that after i finished a particular chapter um i prepared all the anki flashcards and then um, the next day, before starting a new chapter, I go over all the previous Anki flashcards that I've forgotten. All right, let me see if I can find a better example of my um, Anki flashcards. Right, so let's go to Gaini, and then we can study now. And for example, I put a question such as a uterine biopsy showing a biphasic tumor and positive for CD10 ERPR, and what do I think the diagnosis is? So that's something that you, quite similar to how the exam is going to be as well. If I get this wrong, then I should uh, press again or hard um, just be very honest with yourself honestly you, you're doing yourself a favor by by choosing the, the correct answer don't lie so step three obviously is robin's pathology what i found confusing initially is that there there is robin's pathology there's basic pathology and there is pathologic basis of disease and pathologic basis of disease is what you want but it's, it's a huge book and i know a lot of people when you ask anyone the the first advice they tell is like oh you should read robin's from cover to cover um, it's, it's it's quite ridiculous. Like it's it's a huge book. Like it's right here. It's a massive book, and you can I don't think you can just remember all of it, even if you read it. So what I recommend is after you do the e-learning course, 
go to that particular chapter read through it but don't dwell over every little small detail skim through it pay more attention to the morphology boxes those green boxes are quite good pictures are quite good and as well the key concept box which is the blue boxes at the end of each chapter which is quite helpful it's a huge book you, you'll, you'll never remember all of it and quite honestly you, sh you shouldn't so the fourth step is to do the pathology spheres part one course i found that particularly helpful i'll show you the the, the web page now and also leave i'll leave a link down in the description box as well so this is the course that's the website and um, you can just book now they do it every other every few months all, all of the lectures are recorded but what, what i found helpful in pathology spheres course is that it gives you a presentation with bullet points of the main topics that that usually come up in the exam so after you've had an overview in the e-learning course you've read your problems pathology chapter or you skimmed through it then when you come and look at this course it will tell you exactly what you should focus on because these are the common areas in the exam step five is get yourself a few good mcq books there's so many mcq books and i found many of them do not represent the actual exam what i think the best mcq books are the f4c path part one by dr s steel and dr s o'connor i'll put a picture of it uh, here and i will as well put a link for it down in the description so the bad thing about this book is that it's quite outdated um, i think it's it's only a first edition since 2011 a lot of things has changed then a lot of the classifications have changed terminology have changed everything changed so when you do these mcqs at the end after you've studied everything and you have a great you have an overview about all the topics these mcq books will be very helpful so when you do your mcq chapter what i'd recommend for this book is that once you finish the mcqs there is a box of answers just be careful because some of these answers are not accurate and when you scroll a little down or you if you have the physical book or, or, or an electronic copy so when you see that you've gotten a question incorrect double check either by looking it up online or just looking at the explanation which they have following that um, answer box there's an explanation and usually in that explanation you realize that your first answer was actually correct the majority of the questions are fine but but some of the questions are incorrect and that's absolutely fine this happens with every book they usually fix it in the second and third edition but this book was only released once unfortunately so it was never proofread again so this book offers an mcq bank that resembles quite closely to what the exam actually is the second mcq book is the practical application in histopathology and Cytopatho cytopathology and autopsy by uh, Linchi gupta valerie thomas and jason wang and i hope i said their names correctly again this is a more updated book the questions are a bit easy in that uh, book but it also has a statistics and ethics chapters so uh, not many mcq books have these resources so i found it quite helpful for the statistics and the ethics questions so I do recommend this book I found that it does resemble the exam to some extent however it's slightly easier so these are the five steps I've taken in my preparation to the exam I found them really helpful and I don't think many people share their study material uh, so I thought I'd help you out I put this video out and uh, hopefully wish you all the best so if you have any other questions about anything in regards to the exam please leave a question down below in the comments let me know what you need to know if you want my opinion about a particular book put it down i'll respond and just yeah if you like it please give me a thumbs up subscribe and um, stay in touch thank you very much